Right, action! Welcome to the Dream Car Show. I wanted to call it third gear. Course, yeah, I've got one outside. That's it. So Steve, what if I was to tell you I've got a Z4 outside? Yep. It's got an E36 M3 engine in it, highly tuned. Nice. Um, it's running completely bespoke custom suspension setup. 19 right. inch, very rare, very beautiful alloy wheels. Wheels make a car. Uh, it has a full Iceman stainless steel exhaust. Yeah, proper it, loud. Yeah, proper loud. And uh, it has a custom interior and exterior design that makes it look like a Z4, but in a Savile Row suit. What do you reckon? I reckon you've been getting your hands dirty and spending every waking minute in your garage. You may think that, but it's not true. What would you say if I told you it was completely stock out of the factory? Stock? Stock. Haven't touched a thing. Let's go and have a look at it. I'm intrigued, come on. All right, all right, I'm coming. Hello, what have we got here? Wow! Oh my Most, like most people out there, a bit vague on Alpina. Yeah. Um, and this particular car, you probably possibly not even see one on the road. There was only, well, I've never seen one. There's only 167 of them ever brought into the UK. That's know. proper exclusive. Proper exclusive, yeah. You can see a little plaque up there, which I'll uh, point out on the camera. I, I always thought Alpina was just this hardcore tuner yeah. that just, you know, fettled with BMWs. I had no idea that they're actually yeah, they did an actual like manufacturer. This. Yeah, well that's it. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Like, they're, like most petrol heads out there, they kind of, they're aware of the name Alpina. Yeah. They're all, always a bit hazy on the detail. Yeah. And they're like, do they think it's just like an in-house tuning company, or is it like AMG is to Mercedes or something? But you know, BMW have got the M division, so yeah. they don't really need that. I suppose it's a bit like Brabus with Mercedes, isn't it? Alpina, they're really tight, they're, they make tiny numbers of cars. Like BMW and Alpina are very closely linked, but they're separate. And if you buy an Alpina, it actually will come with an Alpina VIN number. Yeah, and the funny story is like when um, when I first found this one to buy it, and I did the routine, you know, uh, a HBI check, it come up um, chassis number, VIN number not recognised, and I immediately <laughs> thought, "Ladies, an alarm bells." Can't shut. And I couldn't suss it out, and the previous owner couldn't suss it out, and um, I think then uh, he actually phoned Alpina, and then that's when we, even I, found out then that um, these have two VIN numbers. Because obviously it's manufactured by BMW as a yeah. you know as a chassis and a body yeah, and all the rest shell. of it yeah. as a shell. Um, so and it has a BMW VIN number in it. But then when it goes to Alpina and it gets like custom built with their engine and all that kind of thing, um, it then has the Alpina VIN number on it. So if, when you all buy one, make sure you get the you look at the Alpina VIN number. But it's um, this is a car as I think we mentioned. Uh, like Alpina. Well, they originally took the the base of the M3 E46 engine. So right. it was E36. Uh, what did I say? E46. E46, yeah. It's no, all in the detail. Yeah. Okay, let's just sort of run through the stats on this car. I mean, bear in mind this is what, nearly 15 years old now. Yeah. What uh, kind of horsepower are we talking? Uh, this is 300 brake horsepower. It's about 360 newton meters of torque. Um, Obviously naturally aspirated, uh, six-speed ZF gearbox. The Jag behind, he's obviously been to the golf club. Yeah. 
most people were vaguely aware of Alpina as a brand, um, but not know the details of it and their history. In it. They've got such a rich history. They were involved in racing, uh, the small 24 hour, all this kind of stuff. They, they won many, many races. They had people like uh, uh, Nicky Lauda, Jackie Hicks, all these people really? raced for them. Yeah. Um, but um, so were they were they sort of focusing on speed or well, reliability? Well, the, their kind of remit was, uh, especially for something like the endurance races, they decided to make sure their cars were so well engineered yeah. they would stay the course. Yeah, they know very they durable. Break down, yeah, yeah. And they just won purely through the the, the beauty of the engineering, really. Um, and then once uh, they kind of got a, a bit of a name and people started hearing Alpina, so people wanted to buy them. It's the saying goes, isn't it? Win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And I think, um, like for me personally, what a recipe for a car. Really well sorted suspension, handling I, I must amazing. say, it rides so yeah, well. Yeah, we're on a Considering it's on very low profile tyres, yeah. 19 inch rims, yeah. and uh, this road, Particular is not the smoothest yeah. on the planet. I'm I'm blown away by how well it rides. I think it's your turn to have a go. The best thing you've said all day. This is your first drive in an Alpina Road Stress. Yeah. Now nice. you, in your job, you've driven a few cars, haven't you? Yes. I mean, I'm talking. It gives a few examples. Uh, Top end stuff. A Pagani Zonda PS. Wow. Um, Porsche 918 Spider, LaFerrari. Ferraris, yeah, yeah. Blah, so blah, you know blah. this is ultimately this is a fantastic car that I think, but from from your perspective it's kind of a bit low rent in a way, you know. But it's got all the right ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are your initial thoughts? How does it feel to you? Because you are a BMW fan, I know. Yeah, but... Straight away, great driving position. Seats are very comfortable, supportive. Yeah, it feels very responsive. Nice bit of feedback through the steering wheel. Nice. Can you feel the, um, like the class, the engineering quality and class? Like imagine Ed's driving right. a 15 year old three litre Z4. By now, 15 years old, yeah. it's gonna be lots of shakes and rattles. This yeah. still feels very well screwed together. Uh, it, it's, it hides its age very well, put it that way. Yeah, well, I think that, that's the beauty of Alpina. I think what you find is... Um, I just it, say, I want to rinse it. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is my baby. Owner in the car. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think what you find, um, particularly with Alpinas, uh, like people either absolutely adore them and they become evangelical or they don't know much about them. Yeah. And the people that do become evangelical and own them, they really look after them. I mean, really look yeah. after them. So when you buy one that's, you know, a few years old, generally you'll find it'll have all the history, it'll have, you know, all the keys, all the, the, the original books. People As just you do did that. with this one when you bought this well, one. Well, I bought this one, yeah, beautifully looked after. Um, and you know it's in, it's in fantastic condition, but as you know, when I first brought it to you, all original, paintwork original, and everything. But it was the paint yeah, was, I mean, it was, was just, showing its age yeah, a bit. It was just showing a little bit of signs of uh, of life. Should yes, we say. yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, after you did the work to it, I mean, you you did do a full detail on it. Yeah, full detail, paint correction. Yeah. Um, Geon ceramic coats. Yeah. Uh, we all did all the interior, interior yeah, the lead reproofed the uh, convertible roof. Yes. Detailed the engine bay, yeah. treated the wheels. Yeah. Um, and it's a hard colour to sort of see the transition as sort of yeah. a, a, a silver stroke grey based colour. But even you sort of were really blown away by yeah, the, just, the gloss. That when you phoned me and said it's ready and I came over, uh, yeah, it's kind of. And it's I love almost, that part of my job. Yeah, it's, it's almost showroom makes, condition, really. Yeah. Makes all the hard work yeah, worth it yeah. when you see the client's face. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's amazing. And, uh, <laughs> so I try not to get it dirty. <laughs> it's got a great sound, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it's it just really okay. Yeah. Do you want to sell it? <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? It's just 
just a dream. It's um, yeah, I, I could, I'd happily drive this to yeah. the, oh, you the can imagine, of France. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a big, big continental. Yeah, it's just I mean, even me sitting as a passenger, it's not bumping and rattling. No, no, around. no, it's not. It's it's yeah. I mean, the, this road in particular, yeah, is terrible. Um, but think, it just it's soaking everything up really well. I think that's that's where the saying comes from with Alpina. It's like an M car, but in a Savile Row suit. Yeah. It, they've ironed out. You know, M cars are fantastic. It's the that they've but M cars are kind of like on a track. Yeah, on the road, it can get a bit tiring. Yeah. But this just it removes that that harshness. Yeah. But if you want to play, my God. So can we? Well, yeah, bear in mind the, the tyres are also... probably best results. you get out of the car. <laughs> they started back in 1962. What? Making cars? Or? No, no, no. They actually were making typewriters. No! Typewriters. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, they were a quite big industrial family, I think. And the, the guy that started it was just a, a bit of a petrol head. And back then, it was the uh, the BMW 1500. Yeah. Like the pre-runner to the 2002, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he basically hand built a, a, a cylinder head for it and put twin car webbers on it because he felt you could get more out of the engine. Just make it breathe better. And he made it breathe better and it was faster. And uh, it was so successful that BMW set up and took notice. So then that's when the relationship kind of started. Ah. And then by then, uh, I think I think in the 70s, they started getting into racing and they was building more and more bespoke parts for the engines. I think in the 80s uh, they were actually officially recognised by the German authorities as an independent brand. Um, so the history is phenomenal. Um, and you know they're still very very strong today. There's I think there's one dealership in the UK sitting there in Nottingham uh, where they they sort of bring them in and in just in tiny tiny numbers. But now I think they are they don't race anymore but they're kind of a, really high-end luxury yeah. so they're like now an M car but yeah. the full-on luxury edition buckets of performance but you've got the luxury yeah, to go with could, it I say exactly what you said there you jump in it and you think oh, I could do a continent in this yeah, exactly. and this is just the little Z4 imagine something like the, uh, the, the bigger big balloons seven, yeah. based on the 5 series and the 7 series yeah. um, they are just awesome when you was you know first talking about getting a, a sports car yeah um, I immediately thought oh you'll go for a box dress you know yeah, and when, you, yeah. when you mentioned oh I'm, I'd like to get an Alpine I was like yeah. really yeah I, I, think... I can see uh, why you've gone down this route and yeah you're, you're, you've Beautiful. I think the no. re what what clinches clinches it for me really. It's got the perfect recipe. I mean, I'm not saying a boxer isn't a fantastic car to drive. They are obviously, but in my eyes, they're too common. Yeah. I want this car. You know, one of well, one of 167 when in 2004. Come on, the rabbit. rabbit. <laughs> um, oh, the golf course. Oh. Yeah, that rarity. And you know, you meet people that know BMWs and they look at it and they just say, what is that? And I think that confuses them when they see 3.4 S yeah. on the wing. 3.4, it's a beautifully, beautifully fettled machine. It brings a smile to you. I was just gonna say, I feel happy. I really do. It's, yeah. I, I don't want to get out. If yeah. that's cool with you, can yeah. I just carry on driving it? I mean, even the interior, um, where you can see, I'll show you on camera, um, it's got bespoke dials, they're the typical Alpina yeah. blue dials. Um, in here particularly, it's got Alpina leather seats, there's extended leather over the centre console and the dash. Um, but this is early days, you just look at them now, have a look online at the interiors of Alpinas, oh my God, just absolutely beautiful. But if you, if you put this next to a 15 year old Z4M, the interior is, feels much more special. In this. in this, yeah, it is a special thing, a very special thing. And the sound. What sound? You said, did you say you want sound? A little bit of sound. It, it takes your breath, doesn't it? You think for a, it on a turns old in car. so well. That front lateral grip is awesome. <laughs> And 
and um, the crazy thing is, you think how much Z4Ms, well, maybe particularly the coupe, how much they're going up in value. Yeah. Um, and they're they're rare, but nowhere near as rare as this. But at the moment, you can find a really good, well looked after one of these for probably around 15 grand. I think it's a good buy. That is, uh... It's a good buy. Uh, you know, even if it's not for investment, just for a toy to play with, and that you're not you will lose love. Money on it. You won't lose money, and yeah. you will love it. It's, it is fantastic. To and drive. because it's from a very small manufacturer, even the road tax is 175 quid a year. You're joking. I really? think the Z4M's 500 odd, whatever. So you've got all of that. Um, you think Alpina, I don't want to take it up to Nottingham to get it serviced. No, any BMW any dealership, local dealer any will local do it. dealer yeah. will do it. Same service, and they've got really long service intervals. The, the M is probably 6,000, 7,000 miles you need a service. Yeah. This, this is normal BMW, you know, maybe, I don't know what they are, what, 12,000 12, miles? 12,000, yeah. It's all normal BMW. So it's kind of, it's just win, 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 win. Well, you bought a little corker here, mate. Yeah. Love it. I'm just trying to work out how I can keep hold of it. <laughs> um, I really, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on this, mate. Yeah. I'm you know, I think like sold on this. It comes back to why we're doing the dream car show. Yeah. And I think you know most people think, oh, Normal dream car. Cars, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not. It's it's what yeah. poster you have on exactly. your wall as a kid. Your interpretation. Yeah. Of uh, the dream car. Well, I, and the thing is, it's like, may, maybe this isn't my dream car. I think a dream car are the ones that are perhaps not attainable. Yeah. But this is kind of the dream car that I can reach. Yeah. You know, and it, you, I think when you get the car that you can actually access and you can afford and you yeah. can run, and it's a great car, I think you totally fall in love with it. Yeah. And you, yet you still have your dream cars. So yeah, the dream car is um, is what is particularly your dream car. Yeah. And if you've got your dream car and you'd like to share your story, please get in touch. Check out the details below, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we'll make a film uh, of your car, and you'll uh, you'll have a pair of clocks talking bollocks. <laughs> yeah, we'll make a great film and feature your car.